Welcome y'all to The Misadventures of Laura Silver, a detective visual novel. Cooper, what is the name of the river in Pilsen? Radbuza, Miss Silver. That's the one. There were two fishermen on their boats, fishing on that river. Then they noticed a corpse approaching them. How could a corpse approach them? If it is being dragged by the current. I see. Then the fisherman pulled the body over to the boat. It was a drowned man. While they were debating on what to do with it, the corpse suddenly came alive and attacked them. One of the fishermen charged the being, only to be killed right after. The other fisherman jumped into the water, trying to escape. He couldn't, though. The Vodnik caught up with him. Oh, and I forgot to tell you that this beast is the Vodnik, uh, the one we are looking for. You should have told me earlier, Miss Silva. Anyway. The Vodnik pulled him under water, and just as he was about to trap the fisherman's soul in one of his jaws, the old man unsheathed his knife and stabbed the Vodnik. Who was this old man, Miss Silva? The fisherman. I see. The stab bewildered the Vodnik, and so the old man could run away. And this is how we were able to hear of the incident. Sorry to interrupt, Miss Silver, but should I turn right here? The car rocks as Cooper drives over a piece of stone. Mm hmm. Excuse me if I'm being rude, but as far as I can see, you aren't looking at the map. I memorized it. Please continue with your story, Miss Silva. I was wondering something, actually. What is it? I forgot what the Vodnik was supposed to store those guys' souls in. I thought you said Jaws. That was improvised. Oh. So we may store them in other things too. Like cups? Whatever they are. Do you want me to explain further? Of course, Miss Silver. So, he's a mystical beast who kills people and stores their souls in cups or something. Plays a violin to lure people to him. Like a siren, but with a violin. You also stated that he likes to craft his jaws in the best way possible. We're dealing with an immortal sea spirit who is an artisan then. You can say that. So, at first glance, this seems like another story to scare children with. You can find a variation of it wherever you go, like, um, Black Annis or the Great Valley. Anyway, in Czechoslovakia, you have a similar bedtime story which is based on this sea monster. But our job isn't investigating a bedtime story. The Vodnik is as real as you and me. A few months ago, it attacked a fishing boat. You know the details, even though it sounds rather hard to believe. Karat herself has talked to the other fishermen who witnessed the incident so we can believe in the credibility of the source. Karat tasks Goda with taking care of the issue, but there has been no proper report coming from him. She also stated that he would give us the details about the mission, though I wonder what kind of detail we are speaking of here. Skoda? Skoda from Foreign Affairs? I guess. When did Mr. Skoda get transferred here? He's been here for almost half a year. He's a man known for his laziness. I doubt that he even tried working on the case. Mr. Skoda is a diligent man, Miss Silva. I disagree with that claim. Are we talking about the same Skoda? I can't exactly say that we have an abundance of employees. I believe there's only one Skoda working in the bureau. Just to be sure, you're talking about Zvin Skoda, right? Uh, yes. Mm. 
How do you know Skoda? We worked together in London for a while. Then it must be a different Ziv and Skoda, surely. I don't recall Skoda as a likable person. Was he also a traffic policeman? Uh, no. We were working as security officers for the Labour Party conference. Which one? Two, three years ago. In Lancaster. Mr. Skoda was kind enough to show me the basics of the job. I got assigned to another department within weeks. I would like to work with Mr. Skoda again, though. You should be glad you didn't. Did you work with him before, Miss Silver? You can say that. Would you like to talk about it? Absolutely not. What did Karat tell you about the job? She told me to help you as much as I could. Yeah, okay. Is this your first job? You mean, as a detective? He smiles and looks at me for a while, only to turn his eyes back to the road. I used to work as a traffic policeman before I was assigned here. I was waiting for a colonial assignment, but then I learned that I was assigned to Miss Karat's bureau. So it's my first job as a detective, but it's not my first job as a police officer. A traffic policeman promoted to detective? Interesting. I got my gun a few weeks ago. I didn't know we were working in one of the bureaus who got to carry guns. Do you know how to use it? I have completed the basic training. Thank god I haven't had reason to fire it outside the firing range. What was Karat's reason for recruiting Cooper, I wonder? Why do you ask? Then, can I assume you have no experience with paranormal incidents? I don't, Miss Silva. I take a glance at my list. It doesn't say anything about the Vodnik except for his name. Even though I tried many times to make sense of the scribble, the name written here is unreadable. What are you looking at, Miss Silva? I'd like... I take a long time to explain. It'd take a long time to explain. I think we have the time. You know that we are doing a different job compared to Skoda's. He's a stationary officer in Czechoslovakia, while we are a mobile task force. Yes. I shake the list in my hand. And this list is our task. A list of beings I should take care of. There are ghosts, beasts, vampires, spirits, and many more in here. Did Miss Karak give you that? Well, no. Then who did? A being that grants wishes, let's call him a semi-official affiliate. What kind of being? He shouldn't know about this. It's best if I don't tell him anything else. Not one that you're familiar with. He doesn't answer. Part 1 1 Beginning Czechoslovakian Republic. So, this is our first hotel. Even though I'm relieved we could find one in this season, I can't deny the fact that it looks small and run down. I open the back door and get my luggage, while Cooper takes his ridiculously enormous suitcase. Maybe we shouldn't have dismissed how heavy the luggage would be when we decided to disguise ourselves as filmmakers. Yeah, good, good point. Shall we go in now? Cooper opens the main door to the hotel, and I leave my luggage on the polished wooden floor next to the reception desk. He closes the door behind us. Cooper joins me at the reception desk. It seems the receptionist hasn't noticed us. He is writing something in a notebook. Miss Silva, I can carry your luggage to your room if you like. No need, Cooper. That's the job of a bellboy, not yours. Miss Silva, I think the bellboys are sleeping at this hour. We know that we've arrived a bit later than we should have. I tap my finger on the desk, staring at the man behind it. He doesn't look this way at all. Uh, hold on. Let me save. <clears throat> um, the 
The man behind the desk finally looks at my face, with baleful eyes that look like they haven't been closed for a century. <clears throat> you can't find any hotel which hires bellboys at this time of the year. We're off season. Cooper tenses up, quickly checking my face to see if I am an if I am angry. <laughs> Do you have reservation? We know that we've arrived a bit later than we should have. Cooper checks his watch again. We are deeply sorry for bothering you at this hour when you'd certainly feel better lying in bed. Do you have any reservations? Cooper seems a bit dumbfounded by the repeated question. The receptionist seemingly ignoring his heartfelt apology. Has Miss Descoda booked any room for us? The man behind the desk sits up, his eyes shining. Zivinskoda, you say? Yes. He tries to find something in the desk, opening one drawer after another. You two must be the filmmaker Skoda mentioned. Then, uh, your names, please? Exactly so. My name is Orwell Cooper. Laura Silver. As he's searching, I start tapping my foot on the floor. Cooper nervously smiles at my demonstration of impatience. He finally finds what he was searching for and starts looking through the newfound notebook. I can clearly read Laura Silver and Orwell Cooper here. My last name is most likely mistook because I am working with a person blessed with the surname Silver. The man behind the desk shows us the notebook. Laura Silver and Orwell Co Copper. Or Copper. Oh, I misread it. <clears throat> he has also mistook my name, apparently. Skoda firmly instructed me that these were the people he booked two rooms for. Truth be told, you sound like a bad copy of a hypothetical Orwell copper. As Cooper gasps, the man behind the desk shakes my hand. Welcome to the Hotel Pavla, Miss Silva. I'm Jindrik Chalupnik. Nice to meet you. I nod while he hands me a room key. W wait, w what about me? Looks like we'll have to wait until Mr. Skoda clears this understand misunderstanding, or you can admit that you're not the copper written here. Cooper looks at me, his expression as helpless as he could be. He probably wants to go to sleep during these wee hours of the morning. Miss Silver, aren't you going to say anything? Hmm. Well, I'm not a bitch, so there must be a mistake. <clears throat> it's true that our employer tends to forget names. It's most likely like the telegraph that reached Skoda was miswritten. This man is working with me. I'm pretty sure that he's the one Skoda has mentioned to you. One would expect a chief detective to be more careful about giving the right name, but life keeps surprising me in the best ways. Cooper smiles with appreciation, as Mr. Chalupnik seems to keep his stoic expression. Miss Silva, you will have to forgive my cautiousness. I'm only doing what Skoda asked me to do. What did Skoda even ask this man? Shooting a documentary shouldn't be considered a suspicious activity. Cooper and I exchange glances. He points to Lupnik with his eyes, begging me to speak. It'd be suspicious if I stood silent for too long. You don't have to ask for my forgiveness. However, this man is indeed the person Skoda was expecting. We shouldn't be wasting time on such a small detail. I'd appreciate if you could hand Cooper his keys. Chalupnik stares at us for a while, then shrugs. I agree that we shouldn't waste any more time. So you might as well go up to your room and sleep, since I won't be handing him the keys until I have Skoda's confirmation. Is he always the suspicious of customers, or does he have something against filmmakers? Chalupnik continues with his regular voice. I'm asking you to leave your friend here for the night, miss. Our disguise was supposed to help us avoid suspicion, but it doesn't seem to be working. Good job, Silver. You're doing amazing. I take my suitcase and turn right, toward the stairs. Miss Silva! I'll be back after I leave my suitcase. His expression softens. We can continue investigating, then. 
It's two o'clock in the morning. So? Cooper stops talking to me, his eyes locked on something behind. I hear footsteps approaching, footsteps that are coming down the stairs. I turn to the right and see Skoda. Hmm. He eyes us for a while, his expression not changing one bit. You woke me up. Skoda, are you implying that the walls here are thin? If you're going to brag about how your hotel has the most soundproof walls in the Czechoslovakia, of all Czech Czechoslovakia, I'd rather not. It won't open as bragging if the... Uh, <clears throat> it won't count as bragging if it's the truth, young man. Is he cranky because we woke him up? Though it will be troublesome if someone hears us talking about the job through these thin walls. Skoda, now that you're here, help us fix the problem with the copper man. Mr. Skoda, please tell Mr. Chalupnik that I am the person our boss mentioned in the telegram. He is the person our boss mentioned in the telegram. Okay. Chalupnik hands C Cooper a room key and shakes his hand. Breakfast is at 8.30 a.m. It'll be served on this floor. Isn't Skoda the only guest in the hotel? It's Hotel Pavla. For you. We keep the hotel in top condition even if only one person is staying at the hotel. I'm more of a resident than a customer though. We've grown close to each other. Am I right, Skoda? Yeah, surely. I'll be showing them to their room then. Thank you. Follow me, copper. Silver. It's Cooper, Mr. Skoda. I'll keep that in mind. Pardon me. Oh. <clears throat> nice to meet you again, Silver. He reaches out his hand. I shake it. Karad has mentioned you a lot during the meetings. Could you tell us why we're here? Karat wrote in her telegram that we're going to learn the details of our investigation from you. Skoda hands me an envelope. The envelope is open. He didn't even bother to hide the fact that he has opened it before. I stare at him. He's being suspicious. Karat has written that you have some business with a weird man. Such indecency! You shouldn't open people's letters like that, Mr. Skoda. Skoda smiles. There shouldn't be any secrets between the employees of the Bureau. Makes me wonder, why is Kara sending you here and there for special cases? That's none of your business. I haven't received any information from the Bureau about the Vodnik of Pilsen for three months. But Kara sent me a letter to hand over to you. Isn't it odd? Why are you getting exclusive access to this information? I should be dealing with this man mentioned in the letter, not you. He's right. He is the one in charge of business in Czechoslovakia. Why would she want you to come all the way here? I don't understand that. Look, Skoda... Hmm... I'm not gonna pull my gut out. Uh, but... Maybe I should save just in case. I'm gonna retort. You've been poking your nose into my job since I came here. <clears throat> Mind your own business. He smiles. Do I look like the type of person who'd- Mr. Skoda! Cooper yells out. We both look at him. He coughs a few times. Mr. Skoda, we're all very tired. It's best if we talk about this tomorrow. He looks up, thinking. Miss Silva is also very aggressive because we have been traveling since yesterday morning. I wasn't being aggressive. I was only arguing because he'd read my ma mail. You know what? <clears throat> Silva's right. I'm gonna get a, a drink of water because my 
throat is drying. <sighs> Cooper continues. I mean, it's only normal that we were showing our worst sides. Uh, let's talk about this at breakfast after we wake up. Skoda crosses his arms. I will definitely come back to this topic tomorrow morning. Don't come back. I'll be up around 9 a.m. See you at breakfast then. Have a good night, Mr. Skoda. You too, Cooper. Skoda goes inside his room. I hear the click of the door lock. Finally. Miss Silva, he may still hear you. I shrug. Miss Silva, Mr. Skoda is actually a good man. I don't know why he replied like that. I don't care whether he is a good or bad, though he's certainly rude. So, should we look inside the envelope? Sure, Miss Silver. <clears throat> uh, let's check his poster. My dearest Laura, I hope you are doing well in Pilsen. I got some information on ML the Vodnik by a little trip to Bureau of Secret Archives and some interrogations. Copies of the documents I found are inside the envelope. I would love to hear from you at the end of your mission. Write me a report after you're done, all right. Don't strain your body and take care of yourself. Please try to sleep more, honey. Sincerely, Karat. Honey? No wonder Skoda thinks I'm being pampered by Karat. You're not being pampered. I think she only wants you to take care of your health. You were going to continue your investigation during the wee hours of the morning, Miss Silva, I don't think that's a good idea. I can manage without sleep. It's an order from our employer that you shouldn't forget to sleep. It's not an order, it's a request. I shrug and open the other document. The Vodnik of Pilsen. This Vodnik appears as a humanoid beast with frog-like face and green hair. With his body covered in algae and mud. Uh, his hands are webbed and his eyes are the color red. Local drownings are said to be his work. After drowning people, he stores their souls in handmade cups. The ones who saw him work on his cups have inf wait saw him work on his cups have informed him about his collection. Uh, type humanoid, conflicting reports, threat level unknown, possibly dangerous habitat. Well, since he's been supposedly drowning people, I would definitely say dangerous. Habitat. Water and swamps around the Radbuza River. Power can shapeshift into liquid form. Unmatched speed in water. Used to be a toy maker. I fold the document and put it in my pocket. Miss Silva, we should let everyone in the hotel know that they should be wary when handling water. We should have asked Skoda if he told anyone about it. We still can. Uh... He knocks on Skoda's door. Mr. Skoda, it's Mr. me, Cooper. Could you open the door, please? No answer. Mr. Skoda, we have to ask you something. I haven't told anyone anything about the water issue. Leave me alone. Yeah, he's trying to sleep, man. Oh, all right. Have a good night, Mr. Skoda. So, Miss Silva, I'll let Mr. Chalupnik know. You seem eager to go to bed, though. I'm sure our safety is more important than 20 minutes of sleep. He smiles brightly. However, Miss Silva, you should go to your room and sleep while I'm on that. Even though I'll be in my room, I doubt that I'll be sleeping. Mm. Sure. Sure. <coughs> I saw no need to disagree. Miss Silva, before I leave, tell me what your room number is. 102. Looks like your room is right next to Mr. Skoda's. Yeah. Mine is 107, so I'll be right across. If you need anything in the middle of the night, you can knock on the door, Miss Skoda. Wait, Cooper. Yes? What are you going to tell Chalupnik? I'll tell him that the water got infected and people advised us not to use the tap. That doesn't sound realistic. What should I tell him then? 
Hmm. Maybe. Yes, Miss Silver? I think we should find the water tank and close the valves that are connected to the external pipes. If we tell Mr. Chalupnik the water is cut off in the hole of Pilsen, they won't check the water tank. Hmm. What is it, Cooper? I don't know if it's right to barge into the boiler room of a building we just entered. It's for the safety of the hotel staff, so it's justified. Right. Now, do we know where the boiler room is? I think that we should search the ground floor, or the basement if possible. I wonder if we can reach there without attracting Chalupnik's attention. Miss Silva! Yes? You mentioned that you had back pain while we were in the car, and you are also clearly tired. Yes? So, maybe you should go into your room and rest, and I'll close the valves? Will you really do that for me? Sure. You're too kind, Cooper. Have a good night, Miss Silver. Cooper, knock on my door when you're done. I'll check if the water is off. All right, I'll see you in a moment then. Cooper's kind of suspicious too. Cooper waves at me as I open the door to my room. I take my coat off. Now, let's see if there's anything suspicious in here. Sleep? Not now. I must check the room first. It's bright, unlike me. It's windy. I would like to stay here. The night is as cold as my soul. But is there a flower pot on the balcony? Those violets will die in this weather. That's um unusually thoughtful of her. Table. I could take a look at my observations and notes, if I had any. Hmm. What if a group of creatures set up an ambush inside the closet? I slowly open the closet. It's safe. Some of this writing is a bit redundant, to be honest. Um. What if a group of creatures- yeah. No, I read that already. I get that, like, a uh, mystery noir that she's going to narrate all of her actions. Some of it is a little too much. Uh, I want to take a look at the room before going in there. Yeah, I already did. I hear a knock on the door. Yes, Cooper? I have closed all the valves. You are faster than I expected. I'll go to my room and check them as well. Good night again, Miss Silva. I nod. I should check the taps to see if Cooper was successful. I push the bathroom door. Hmm? It's not opening. I pull the door, surprised by how it opens. Why would a bathroom door open outwards? Anyway. I open the tap. Only a few droplets of water drip. That's a relief. Other than that, it's a sink. Nothing more, nothing less. You're really gonna turn off all the water? How are you supposed to- are you supposed to like wash your hands in the morning, or brush your teeth, or use the toilet? The water is running though. By using the toilet flush, we have used our water resources that are already restricted, and you have guaranteed that you will die in a potential water shortage, Silver. See? I turn the faucet to on. Only a few drops of water come out. Cooper has done a good job. I slipped the document I got from Karat into the notebook. I would rather spend the night interrogating Chalupnik or the employees, but I don't want to draw attention to myself. Our disguise as filmmakers will help us gather information without attracting suspicious, but Chalupnik seems eager to be suspicious of us anyways. I wonder if Skoda lets something slip about our job. Well, in any case, it seems like I don't have any choice but to sleep. I 
I've always thought it's a useful thing to sleep with one eye open. What was that? It was a sound coming from the balcony. I throw off my blanket, turning my head toward the balcony door. I get up, grabbing my gun from the table. I press my back against the wall, standing right next to the balcony door. You can never be too cautious. I take a deep breath. Silver, on the count of three, you're going to pull the balcony door open. One, two, show yourself! No one is here. I notice a plant pot on the railing is nowhere to be found. Did it fall because of the wind? I sigh while closing the balcony door behind me. Why does it have to be so cold? I put my coat and hat on, checking my pocket watch. I notice it's already 8.30. I better go downstairs and meet Cooper instead of aiming my gun at missing pots. I notice a girl running up the corridor. When she sees me, she looks up at me with tears in her eyes. You, the lady with the dead person hair. Oh, rude. I believe that's me. Yes. I approach her. Are you the one who took my gloves? I don't know what you're talking about. I've never seen you around here before. You look suspicious. That means... I don't know what you're talking about. Who are you? Who are you? You said it yourself. I'm the lady with the dead person hair. She pouts. Fair enough. I'm Pavla. The hotel's name is also Pavla. I assume she's related to Mr. Chalupnik. Possibly his daughter. Did you lose your gloves, Pavla? Or maybe she was born here and was left to die. Then Mr. Chalupnik found her and named her after her the hotel. <laughs> or she's a shapeshifter who decided to name herself the hotel to fool me. Miss, someone played a trick on my gloves to steal them. Did you do it? I don't want to deal with this. Ugh. Miss Silva, good morning. Cooper comes to the rescue. Who's this young lady? She might be the daughter of Mr. Chalupnik. Are you the one who took my gloves, carrot head? He laughs. I don't know what you're talking about, young lady. Then it's Miss Deadhead. Uh, dead hair. Why do you believe Mr. Carrot Head is innocent? You look more suspicious. You did it. That's not very intelligent of you. Miss Silver! Cooper looks at me anxiously. I can't believe you said that to a child, Miss Silver. What if I did? Ah! She starts crying. Oh. This is the last thing I want to deal with right now. I should have kept my mouth shut. Cooper crouches down. Miss Chalupnik? He takes out a notebook from his inside pocket. Miss Chalupnik, I think I can help you. What? Would you mind telling me what your gloves look like, Miss Chalupnik? They are black. Cooper scrawls something in the notebook. What is he doing? How long were they? She points to her wrist while sniffing. Um, they came up to here. They had floral patterns inside too. I see. How old are you? Six and a half. And and they were bigger than my hands. Papa said I could wear them when I grow up too. Cooper showed the notebook to Pavla. Do they look like this? Yes. Cooper stands up. He puts the notebook away before I take a look at it. We'll be working on finding them, Miss Chalupnik. Will you find who took them too? Of course. Really? Yeah, after all, we're... Cooper looks at me for confirmation. He won't just tell a little girl that we're detectives, right? We research. We're researchers. Nice save, Silver. Pavla glares at me. I feel like she would murder me if she wasn't so tiny. Can you find my gloves or not? Were you going downstairs to see your father, Pavla? She nods. Then let's uh, go downstairs together. We want to talk to Mr. Chalupnik, too. Mr. Chalupnik is sitting at the reception desk, as usual. I hope he doesn't find out that I made his daughter cry. Uh, <clears throat> good morning, precious metals. Uh, good morning, Mr. Chalupnik. 
Pablo runs down the stairs, pushing Cooper aside. Cooper tries to regain his balance by holding onto the banister. Pavla! Papa! Shrupnik's eyes brighten as he lifts Pavla up and twirls her around in the air. Pavla's shrill laughter hurts my ears. <laughs> wow, Miss Silver is me, huh? Good morning, my dearest. Good morning. Is everything all right, Pavla? You look upset. I am. The new customers upset me. Oh, you little... I couldn't hear you well. Could you repeat that a bit louder, dear? Unfortunately, Pavel's voice is quite audible. I didn't like the new customers! Especially that lady with the dead hair. I think she might be the one who stole my gloves. What? I told you I didn't do it, you nails the chalkboard voice little... Miss Silver! Cooper looks at me with, <laughs> with the same anxious expression on his face. Fine. I shouldn't get aggressive over what a child says. Silva, what is the explanation of this? I don't know. Seems like I take joy from stealing from random kids. Random kids? My dearest Pavlo is not a random kid. Pavlo is cocking a snook at me. Whoop. I'm trying hard not to strangle you, kid. <laughs> now, now, Mr. Chalupnik. Let's not get mad. Chalupnik crosses his arms as he stares at me. He's... He's doing something with his eyes. Is he winking at me? Oh, he's got a better sense of humor than I thought. I see. He's doing this as an act to please his daughter. We'll be searching for your daughter's gloves in the entire hotel. We talked to Miss Chalupnik a little while ago. Please take a look at this, Mr. Chalupnik. Looks like Cooper hasn't noticed Chalupnik's little act. He takes the notebook out and points to the page. He scrawled some stuff on. Uh, the orange mister drew my gloves, Papa. He's done a marvelous job indeed. Draw? I take a look at Cooper's notebook. He has done a decent job. Maybe he can draw the beast we are dealing with. That way we would have more information in the report we mailed to Karnak. I like the orange mister, but Miss Deadhair is so lame. You're the one who's lame. What did Miss Silva do to you, Pavlov? She called me stupid. I just thought you... <laughs> I just thought you could use some detective reasoning if you're going to blame someone. Deducti... Deductive reasoning. Pavlo Hines behind Chalupnik. Silva, you either do your job instead of arguing with children or I'll make you pay for that. Papa, that's not enough. Threaten her with kicking her out. It looks like the scaredy cat act earlier was planned on getting her father's attention. The worst kind of child. Are you sure, honey? Pavla nods. Silva, you either do your job instead of arguing with children or you're sleeping at another hotel tonight. Pavla cocks me a snook again. See if you can find better than Hotel Pavla, dead hair. I don't know if there are any hotels nearby and I don't want to sleep on the street tonight. That's for sure. Chalupnik winks at me again with a rather sad face this time. I believe he wants me to apologize. Yeah, I'll apologize. Maybe. Well, actually, I'm not sure. I'm not sure how I feel about this. I don't like kids like this. Uh, I don't like people like this. Not necessarily because she's a kid, but in general, I don't appreciate rudeness. Um, but I feel dad. I feel bad for Chalupnik, so I'll apologize for him. I'm sorry, Pavla. Didn't you hear me? We'll be fine if you find the one who stole my gloves. I sigh and take out my notebook. Now, when did you lose them? I think... I think you meant when did they get stolen? When did they get stolen? Just now, they went out the door. Huh? The gloves started hovering and then they opened the door and flew off. Are you sure you didn't imagine it? Y yes <laughs> There was a question mark at the end of her yes. I'm not sure she knows for sure. <clears throat> when did this happen exactly? A little while ago. I ran after the gloves, but they disappeared into thin air. I see. You don't believe me, do you? Dead haired miss. 
I do. You don't look like you do. I really do. It's because you don't want to sleep on the street tonight, right? No, Pablo. I really do believe you. Miss Silva, is there any way that the Vodnik is inside the hotel? Even if the Vodnik was inside the hotel, I doubt he could possess gloves like that. Maybe it was just her imagination running wild. I hope so. I don't want to deal with anything else, let alone a ghost. Chulupnik straightened up at the moment I said ghost. A ghost? A ghost might have possessed the gloves. I think Paul Vlav was just imagined it, Miss Silva. Papa, do you think it was? Chalupnik takes Pavla's hand. Now, my angel, shall we search the hotel together? Okay, but only if you carry me on your shoulders. Sure, sure. Just wait a bit, darling. Chalupnik comes up to us rather menacingly. Look, Silva, Cooper. He's talking in a low tone now. He doesn't want Pavla to hear. I can't sense any friendliness in his voice. I see that you don't want to waste any time on this. I get it. However, don't make things up like that. Pavo is a little girl who's almost always scared of every little thing. She's... she's not very strong. She even thinks that she sees her mother's ghost from time to time. We all know ghosts aren't real. Mr. Chalupnik, we're deeply sorry. If I hear you mention ghosts or such nonsense around my child again, I won't let you get out of here in one piece. Hear me? I nod. Chulupnik lifts Pavlov on his shoulders and leaves the lobby. It wouldn't be possible for a man of his height to be able to carry someone on his shoulders if the ceiling of the hotel wasn't so high. I sit on one of the couches in the lobby. This conversation has drained me. Cooper stays standing. Did he just threaten us? Yeah, we're losing some of our limbs if we're talking about you know what again. He's just finished. Let's just finish our job as quickly as possible and leave this place. I wonder what happened to Mr. Chalupnik's wife. She died. I believe this is the reason why he spoils Pavla so much. Even though she's spoiled, I think you did well. And I think you're being optimistic, Cooper. He smiles. So shall we go to the dining hall? I don't want to sit there. Oh, uh, why, Miss Silva? Because there'll only be us in the huge place. Isn't that a bit... Don't tell me you're being shy. Hello there. I noticed you two were talking... Well, taking your time coming to the dining hall, so... I decided I should come here to greet the both of you. Judging from the appearance, he seems like he is the cook. Well, it doesn't take a detective to see. Wait. He has a knife. He has a knife! What? What? What is this? What is this dramatization? It's fine, he's the cook. Of course he's gonna have a knife. I stare at the knife in his hand. I should be able to grab my gun within seconds if he tries to make a move. We were just talking about going into the dining room hall, but... Why are you carrying a knife, Mr. Cook? Wait, I'm carrying a knife? The cook bursts out laughing. I I'll leave this bag in the kitchen. Just a moment. What's so funny about this? He returns to the kitchen, leaving me and Cooper behind. Phew. Do sharp things make you uncomfortable too, Miss Silva? No. I mean, they do make me uncomfortable if I'm not the one holding them. Oh, I see. You can never know what people might do to you with sharp things. Uh, yes, it'd be horrible if they cause any accidents. I didn't mention any accidents. Mr. Cook returns, this time with no knife in his hand. Hello again! I was just cutting some potatoes when I heard you two. I approached without thinking twice. Having a knife in hand would scare people off, silly me. It's no problem. It is a problem. Then shall we take it from the beginning? Sure. I don't trust this cook fellow. He has access to all sorts of cutlery. 
I don't feel safe around here. Not to mention, he might have poisoned the food too. Uh, okay, I also have a question about the water. Because he's a cook, how is he supposed to cook without water? Oh, where were we again? Ah, oh, right. I noticed you both were taking your time coming to the dining hall, so... I decided I should come here to greet you both of you. We were just talking about going to the dining hall. I heard! I also heard this lady here looks a little bit anxious about it. I was. I still am. He stretches out one hand to me and his other hand to Cooper. I'm Vilmin Willem. I'm Willem. Nice to meet you both. I shake it. I see Cooper is doing the same with Willem's other hand. What? Is Willem his sur surname or his name? Laura Silver. Uh, oh well, Cooper. Nice to meet you, Mr. How would you like us to address you? Cooper, of course, wouldn't be content with calling someone he just met with their first name. Willem's fine. And how should I call you? I think I'd be more comfortable if I could address you with your surname. That's a shame. Then you'll have to learn I'm related to that heartless Zivin Skoda. Is he Skoda's brother? Now that I think of it, they look alike. Do they? I I totally don't remember what Skoda looked like. He was short, with dark hair, and that's all I remember. <laughs> Before you make any assumptions, I'm his cousin. Is this why Skoda picked the hotel? I hope you'll be alright with me calling you Mr. Willem then. You should have gone with that, with the joyful Skoda. Wait, you should, wait, wait. You could have gone with the joyful Skoda. <laughs> At least you aren't like Chalupnik. He tried to call Zivin Skoda the Black, then he switched to Skoda the Second. Sounds a bit like an epic hero when you put it like that. Right? Skoda's a great surname with a good sound. My only concern about it is that I'm sharing it with... His expression sours as he points upstairs. Possibly at Skoda's room. You know, that slob. Is it alright for you to be talking behind customers like that? He is my cousin first and foremost. Being a customer comes later. Though nothing changes the fact that... He is a slob. Cooper seems concerned. M maybe we should wake him up. You heard him last night. He doesn't look like the type to appreciate the wake-up call. Forget about him already, Cooper. I bet you're not comfortable standing up like that. Why don't you sit down next to Silva? M what about you, Mr. Villem? I can serve breakfast here if you'd like. It'll be nice and cozy. It won't take long. You don't have to do that. We can eat the dining room just fine. I insist! It will be like having a picnic in the lobby. Do sit down, though. I get tired of watching you stand. Cooper acquiesces and sits on the couch. Don't be such a stranger. There are only seven people in the hotel. We should get familiar. I'm talking to you too, Silver. I'm relaxed enough. Are you sure? You look pretty tense to me. I am relaxed. Is that so? Then let me hear your order nice and clear. Tea's fine. Do you have any Earl Brown? Earl Brown? Miss Silver, maybe you meant Earl Grey? I know what I said. Brown sounds mediocre for the name of an Earl, personally. I wouldn't make someone named Brown an Earl. He's talking too much. Fine. Earl Grey it is. I can't believe they don't know about Earl Brown. What about you, Cooper? I'd like some tea, too. Nothing to eat? Is it British culture that you don't have breakfast in the morning? We do have a rich breakfast culture, but... Cooper stops and stares down. I just had a bad feeling inside. I don't think I can eat. A bad feeling? I can bring you some herbal tea if you're feeling unwell. It's not because of that. It's more of an instinct. I feel like bad things are going to happen. That's why I've lost my appetite. Interesting. Three customers in the hotel, and the two that I want to serve don't want anything. He seems disappointed. Are you really sure you only want tea? I nod. 
Tea it is then. Mr. Villem, what is it, Cooper? We heard on our way here there's a problem with the waterworks. Looks like the water will be cut off for at least a few days. Really? I wonder if anyone in the town considered letting us know about it. It's a good thing I've been using the water from the tank, but... He stops speaking and turns to look behind us. I turn too. There's a maid coming out of the restroom with a bucket in her hand. Bill looks back at us with a smile. Have you turned... <clears throat> Have you too met Blanca? Have you, Miss Silver? No. Wilm lifts one hand and calls. Blanca! The maid smiles at him and puts the bucket on the ground before she starts walking. When she approaches, she greets us. Welcome to the Hotel Pavla. That's the maid of the place. Have a little chit-chat while I'm bringing you your tea. See you!